Father, we thank you today for the sacrifice that you have made. Thank you that you thought much of us to send your son to die in our place. We believe that this is a day that confirms for all of us that our hope is built to nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. We dare not trust the systems of this world. We dare not put our trust in our own strength. But we put our trust in you. Let this word bring hope to those who will watch and listen. Use your servant today. And on this Resurrection Sunday, let us remember the sacrifice of Jesus, but also let us remember that we have the victory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. I want to share with you what the Lord placed on my heart. And that is, he's in the crisis. Christ in the crisis. The entire world at this time is faced with one common invisible enemy. But it's also true that the enemy, this enemy, invisible enemy, is faced with, if you will, the reality that only one invisible force is the answer to fight it and also other future enemies. An invisible God one day spoke everything into existence in spite of him seeing chaos around him. If all of us would just take on the nature of God, the nature of God, the nature of God is simply this, when there is chaos around us, we should respond the way God responded to chaos in the book of Genesis. I don't know what chaos is in your life right now. Perhaps it's a chaos that has to do with your family, chaos with your health. Maybe your chaos is battling the coronavirus. Perhaps your chaos is dealing with, um, you know, lack of finances, you're sick in your body, you're struggling with your children, maybe it's your relationship, maybe your chaos is low self-esteem. I don't know what you're struggling with, but the chaos God saw in the book of Genesis, verse 2, the Bible says, was formless, formless. Let's read Genesis 1 in the very first two verses, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 then says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God was moving over the waters. The Spirit of God was moving over the chaos. For some reason, we as God's children have the tendency to think that God is incapable of moving in our crisis. I don't think there's any person on this planet that can honestly say there wasn't a time when you kind of doubted God. There wasn't a time when you thought that, oh, this is kind of like impossible, and fear took over your life. And perhaps that's your issue right now. You're worried about the economy. You're worried about the issues of life. You're worried about how our norm has been interrupted. This is unusual. I've been pastoring for 29 years, and, and, and when I look out right now, I am preaching in an empty room, yet I am reaching more people around the world than I would have ever done on an Easter Sunday. 
Though they, I mean, can you picture yourself? You remember last year this time, for those of you who are members of this church, you remember last year this time where you were seated? You know, and how you attended maybe the eight o'clock service and now you, you know, the 11 o'clock service, you know, you were there and you remembered how the worship was intense and, and the people were praising God. But now we're in a crisis and uh, we have to ask ourselves the question, where's God in all of this? Is he in it? Is he moving? Is he changing things around or has he abandoned us? Did he left us to suffer and, you know, feel hopeless? Do you feel that your crisis is so big that God has left you and you're there all alone suffering in it? Let's go to John 16, beginning at verse 31. It says, do you now believe? Do you now believe? It's a question. Jesus replied, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. Jesus was saying, okay, okay, guys, you're going to leave me. Uh, You followed me. You know, you've done ministry with me. The crowds were a part of what I do. My assignment literally is coming to a close. It's the end. I I serve my purpose on the earth. And all of you are going to go back doing your jobs. That's why I'm sending you out as disciples. But make no mistake about it. I am not alone, Jesus is saying, because my Father is with me. So ladies and gentlemen, you and I must confess every time we find ourselves in a crisis, we must say to ourselves that Christ is in the midst of the crisis with us because the same way the Father never Never left the son Jesus Christ it's the same way Jesus is never going to leave his children in the midst of a crisis you got to believe that then verse 33 says I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace not in the economy not in the systems of the world as the psalmist says some trust in chariots and horses but we will trust in the name of our god jesus was saying to them so that you so that you may believe in him and have peace he says peace have peace in him so that in me he says you may have peace and in the midst of the crisis you can have peace That sounds impossible. That sounds crazy. How can you have peace in the midst of a crisis? How how can you be going through a storm in your life? How can you not understand what God is up to when your norm has been interrupted? And, And this preacher is telling me that God is in the midst of it. Yes, these are his words. He says, I have told you these things so that in me, in me, not in the system, not in your own strength. But in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have, he says, you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. You see, if Jesus Christ is not in this present crisis and in your own personal crisis, then he must have lost his power and influence that was recorded in Genesis 1. If he's not in your crisis, somehow maybe uh, going back to the time of creation, maybe he has lost it. Maybe, maybe God is not as powerful as he says he is because you're left alone in your crisis and you don't know what to do. But that's not true, my friends. You cannot believe what the enemy is saying to you. If God the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, moved in the worst crisis ever known to man, and that is the time of creation where everything was formless, why can't you believe that he is well able to move in your crisis today. If God stepped out of his world in the book of Genesis and literally saw nothing, everything was formless, the Bible says. It was empty, it was void, and he spoke into the crisis and brought life into it. How much more will he do for you today? The problems you are going through. So I declare to you today 
that if you would only trust in the power of our God, he will move and rearrange everything that is out of order in your life. I have come this morning to tell you on this resurrection day that God is rearranging things in your life. I know you don't understand it. I know it's uncomfortable. I know you don't like it, but he is in control and he's shifting things. He's arranging things for his glory and for your benefit. His glory and for your benefit. I got to say it again, his glory and for your benefit. Praise God. So all throughout history, we find Christ moving in every crisis man faced. Everyone in Genesis, when man fell from grace, it was God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who gave him the opportunity to regain his fellowship with him. When man sinned, lost his way. So for those of you who right now feel as if, man, I've lost my way. I turned my back against God. I'm, I'm, I'm not pleased about it. I'm depressed. I'm whatever you're going through. Just like Adam and Eve, glory to God. God was in the midst of their crisis and he brought life back to man. In Exodus, when Moses' life was threatened as a child, it was God who used uncommon ways to preserve him. When, when his mother was concerned about him because he was going to be a prophet and, 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 and they, were, they had made a de declaration that all of the Hebrew boys were going to be killed, his mother put him in a basket, glory to God, and God used an uncommon way of, of bringing Moses through that he reached manhood so that he can deliver his people. I am telling you, if there is an anointing, if there is a calling on your life, I don't care what crisis you find yourself in, God is in it with you and you're going to come out of it. Praise God. In Joshua chapter 6, it was God who helped his people to use their voices to tear down a wall that was built to block them from reaching their inheritance. Here it is, a wall that has divided the children of Israel from their promise and their blessing and was blocking them. How many of you this morning, this day, maybe you've got a wall that's blocking you from reaching your full potential? Maybe there's a wall that's stopping you from being the man that God has called you to be. Maybe there's a wall that's blocking you from becoming the woman that God has called you to be. And everything you're trying, it's not working and you're getting depressed over it. Well, the Lord sent me here today to tell you that just like how the Jericho wall came down, Christ was in that crisis. He's also in your crisis today. Are you hearing me? In Judges, it was God who let the Midianites turn their own weapons on themselves. God will do it, man. To take their own lives so that the Israelites uh, would no longer have to worry about their harvest being stolen. The story of the Midianites and the Israelites, every time the Israelites would plant their crops and do their thing and, and wait months after for harvest, the Midianites would stay and look over the hill, look down in the valley at them and wait until it's harvest time and will come in and literally rape them of their crops rate them of their harvest. How many of you, for some reason, you feel as if the more you work, the more you labor, is the more you're losing. So you put, um, you know, one foot forward, you go two steps backward, and you're thinking, God, what, what is happening? I can't make progress. Well, the Israelites felt exactly that way. They could not make progress, and they were really like you, frustrated. Why is God sitting by and allowing these people to take from us? us what we have labored for. And some of you are feeling like that now, but I'm here today to tell you that God spoke to the Israelites and he said, this battle is not yours, it is mine. And he gave them instructions and glory to God, the Midianites killed themselves off. God didn't allow the Israelites to touch them. Listen, there are some battles God don't want you to fight it. He doesn't want you to put your hands on it. 
Put your faith in him and trust him and know that your God will deliver you. How are you feeling today? Are you feeling like God has walked out on you? Are you feeling like things have been stolen from you? Well, today I'm telling you crisis in your crisis. In the book of Ruth, it was God who led a young widow, Ruth, to follow her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to Bethlehem. And it was there she found herself in a low-paying job that produced for her a wealthy husband named Boaz. A low-paying job. For those of you, perhaps you're on minimum wage. Perhaps your salary is not enough. And you're thinking, what good can come out of what God has given me? You've had a lot of losses like Ruth. Her husband had died and she de was determined not to stay uh, where she once lived with her husband. She followed her mother-in-law, Naomi, and she said, wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. And, and she ended up in a low-paying job, a minimum wage. And one would ask, what good can come out of a minimum wage? Well, the Word of God in the book of Ruth tells us, yes, a lot can come out of it. And I want to talk to some of you this morning who feel as if you're down in the ground and you don't know what to do. And you're down and you're in the field and you're laboring and it seems as if you're at a low sta stage in life and you're wondering, God, when are you going to pick me up? When are you going to help me? When are you going to send some support for me? But I'm telling you, while you are down, there is a God. Just like how Boaz was watching Ruth, there is a God that's watching you. And honey, it's only a matter of time for God to show up in your crisis and prove himself that if God be for you, Oh my God, I feel like running out of this building down I-9 to 5 all the way to Miami back up here and start preaching again. Praise God. Because I'm telling you, your God is in your crisis today. In 1 Kings, it was God who gave Elijah the courage to stand up to Jezebel, who, whose intention was to kill all of the prophets in the region and in the midst of all of the false prophets he Elijah requested that an altar be built and he told the people to pour the water on top of the altar until the water circled around the altar and then he called on his God to show up and show out they were calling on their gods. Nothing happened. No fire could come down. Let me tell you something. When you call upon your God in the middle of your crisis, your God will come down. You see, the false gods that are out there and the naysayers are out there, they can call on everything else, but that will not help them. You see, today is a reminder to all of us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a reminder to us that sin has no control over us. Sin, sin cannot redeem us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, my friend. When Christ is in your life, he's in the crisis with you. Are you hearing me today? And in the midst of all of the false prophets, the Bible says, Elijah called down for fire and it came down and it consumed that altar. And then they believed. That Elijah's God is truly the right God. In the book of Daniel, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. And God commanded the lion to become friends with Daniel. Who glory to God. God commanded the lion. See, I don't know where life has thrown you. I don't know what situation you find yourself in today. I don't know if you're in the lion's den. Something in life is threatening you. But I'm telling you, God will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Glory to God. God will let whatever the enemy meant for evil to turn around for his good. All things, all things, all things. Not just some things, but all things are working together for your good. Also in the book of John, a young couple who that day entered into a marriage covenant but found themselves running out of wine for their guest because Jesus, it, it has allowed Jesus to step in and fix their problem. 
their need, their crisis, allowed Jesus to step in, glory to God, to step in and fix their problem. In Matthew, the disciples were in a boat when Jesus uh, uh, encountered a storm with them. And the Bible says Jesus commanded the storm to cease. It don't matter. Storm, a lion's den, it don't matter. False prophets coming against you. Crisis always in the crisis. All throughout history, God keeps showing up in the crisis that has developed on the earth. And if that's true, my friends, you and I can believe that this present crisis, whatever it may be, that God is also in the midst of it. But there's no greater crisis, no greater crisis than living every day facing the sting of death. The thing you need to know about death is death suggests finality. It's a feeling of the end with no hope of life. All of us can relate to the idea that we are faced with many challenges on a daily basis. And at times, we feel like our faith in Jesus Christ is not enough to bring us through. That's true. There are times we just feel like, okay, you know, we go to church, we read our Bible, we pray, we have faith. But sometimes, man, God, this stuff ain't working, man. Because why? We're people, we rely on our senses, right? So if we can't see him, we rely on, let's, let's see if we can feel for him. And then there are times we can't feel him because we can't trace him. You know, okay, uh, then we, can we hear him? And sometimes, you know, there's so much static and clutter that we can't hear him. And, and then, then there, 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 there are times we want to taste him, right? Like the Bible says, come taste and see that the Lord is good. But there are times you can't taste the Lord because you, your senses won't work. But you have to rely on your faith, ladies and gentlemen. You have to rely on your faith that your God is in the midst of everything that the enemy has put in your path. So I want to encourage you today that the resurrection of Jesus is proof that there's no crisis big enough that can overpower the believer, not even death, not even death. That's why we Christians, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of dying because to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. You see, in a crisis, we have a tendency to be afraid and look for ways to mourn our hurts. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay to cry out. And, you know, if you're hurting, I'm not saying you ought to ignore the fact that you are, you're having a uh, painful um, kind of experiences and you're going through a difficult time. It's okay. But if you look for God through the lens of faith, you will witness his resurrection power in your life. Right in the midst, middle of your crisis, if you look for God in your crisis, you'll find him and you'll find the peace that surpasses it. All, all human understanding. I want to read Matthew's gospel Chapter 28, two verses, and then I'm going to pray with you. Here's what the word of the Lord said. The angel said to the women, on a day like this, women came to the grave site. They wanted to kind of honor the master. And I don't know if they forgot that Jesus told them that, that he was going to come up out of the grave in three days. I don't know if they forgot that, but they went anyway. And the Bible says that the angel said to the, the, the women, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You're in the middle of a crisis, ladies. You're in the middle of a crisis. Okay, your Savior was crucified. You just witnessed that. And I know you're crying and I know you're hurting. I know, I know, I know today in the 21st century, I know you have, you've had a lot of losses in your life and I know you're crying and, and you, you are literally living in the cemetery of your situation. I mean, nothing but death and destruction and failure around you. And you're wondering, where is God in all of this? Well, the angel said to the women, do not 
be afraid. And God sent me here today to tell you, do not be afraid because he's in the middle of the crisis with you. And then he says, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was, past tense, crucified. Was. I know you're looking for Jesus. I know some of you are looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking for God. You're saying, God, where are you? I, I, I'm hurting. I'm in the middle of this situation and I don't know what to do. Okay, well, 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 the angel told the ladies, okay, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but look at verse six and this is where I close my message, man. This is where I'm excited. This is where, I, 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 you know, I just, just look to and, 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 and embrace and, and really have the faith faith and the comfort and the confidence that, that what I am doing right now each and every day in serving God is not going to be in vain because the angels said to the women, he's not here. Oh, that's so comforting. The Christ who was crucified, glory to God, moments ago, the Christ who gave up his spirit. The Christ who you have witnessed them taking him from the cross, bloody, wrapped him up and prepared him for burial and put him in a borrowed tomb and sealed the tomb. That Christ, hallelujah, praise God. He's not here. He has risen. <laughs> he has risen. Oh, and he has risen. So he can live in your crisis. He can live in my crisis. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, this will make anybody shout. This will make anybody dance. This will make anybody scream. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you at home. I hear you screaming out. He is alive. He is risen. Praise God. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Come see the place. Fernandez, is there a crisis? Yes. But come. 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 Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me show you. He's in it. <laughs> he has all power to fix the crisis. He has all power to fix your problem because he's in it. He's not dead. He's not sleeping. He's not ignoring you. He's in it. You don't have to be fearful. Now, you may have to be fearful if you have not turned your life over to him. Maybe you have not said to him, Lord, I want you to reign and rule in my life. Perhaps you have not done that. If you have not done that, I want to give you an opportunity to make him alive in you. I want to give you this opportunity to say, Lord, come into my heart. I want to experience your resurrection power so that in every crisis that I find myself in, I can see you through the lens of faith. The Bible says if you want to know the Lord as your personal Savior, you want to become a disciple of Him, you have to confess with your mouth. You have to believe in your heart that you're a sinner. And once you do that, get into your word, man. Be a part of a local church. You are a part of a church now. You're streaming. Don't let this empty building fool you. This is just a building. This is not the church. The church is you. It's in you and me. And if today you say, Pastor, I want Christ in my crisis, I want you to pray the sinner's prayer with me. I want you to pray it. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Today I repent of my sins. I invite Jesus to be Lord of my life. I declare that I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you that your people have received you, that they have embraced the Christ while they're in a crisis. 
I pray that you will strengthen them and help them to begin their new walk with you so that, Father, their future will be set, so that they will have eternal life. We give you praise for it. Bless all of our members and those who watch us on a regular basis and even our visitors today. Thank you for them allowing the words through song or the scripture or this message to uplift their spirit. Thank you for their faithfulness and giving to this ministry. Thank you that there are many right now, some just logged on a few moments ago, that they see the need, Lord, of supporting this ministry to help us to keep what we do alive and relevant around the world. Thank you that you give seed to the sower. Thank you that many are finding it a joy to give. Bless their storehouses. Bless them as they're in the middle of a crisis. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't you feel better? Don't you sense that God is in the crisis with you? The crisis may never leave you for now, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. If you just gave your life to Christ, I'm going to ask you if you will call that number or go to our website. And I want you to request that book, the book, Beginning Your New Walk with Christ. I'll send it out to you absolutely free. That's 954 742 7832. You can go to our website, thefaithcenterint.org. And if you do that, my friend, just click on the salvation link and we will get this information out to you as soon as possible. I want to encourage you to watch the rebroadcast of this uh, service, the MP3 uh, sermon for the 9 o'clock and the 11 o'clock service will be uploaded to the website. Go and download it. And thank you so much for doing that. I will be right here this Wednesday at it again to preach the Word of God. So I hope you will join us for our midweek service and the Lord richly uh, bless you. Now, I want to remind you, if you hadn't gotten a chance to give, they're going to put the information on the screen as the singers are coming and we're going to close out our service today. Thank you so much for giving. And by the way, those of you who live in the Fort Lauderdale area, Miami, Dade County area, our Dare to Care food bank is still open. In our ministry, we're so blessed that we're still able in this crisis, still able to take care of people who are struggling, hurting families who are struggling and, and don't know what to do and can hardly get groceries because they don't have money or, or maybe the shelves are empty in the, gro in the grocery stores. I'm going to ask those of you who, anybody, you don't have to be members of our church. The food bank is not for membership. It is whosoever will. If you are in our region, if you call that number, say, I want to know where your food bank is. Every Saturday, there's plenty of food. When I say yesterday, there was so much food we gave away absolutely free and it's happening because of partners like you so please get the word out let everybody know that they can go to our Lauder Hill property in, in uh, Lauder Hill, Florida you can call that number, they'll give you information it's our Dare to Care Center the address is right there, come on quickly write it down the address is right there so on next Saturday and every Saturday whether the coronavirus is still out there or not. We, we've been doing it for years. We'll continue to do it. We're still practicing the social distancing. You don't have to come out of your car. You just pull up and then they'll get it into the trunk of your car and so forth. So thank you so much. Now we want you to give give to our ministry. They're going to put up the cash app, the text to give, or you can call Faith Center members. Come on, those of you who don't know how to do electronic giving, we're waiting for you. We're waiting for your financial support. Thank you so much. It's been an incredible Resurrection Sunday. I love you, and don't ever forget that Jesus is Lord, and faith in your God will always move mountains out of your life. I'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you. Bye-bye. 
Hey everyone, this is Henry Fernandez and I wanna thank you so much for watching this video, my friends. And I want you to subscribe to my channel and my friends, give me a thumbs up. If you like the video, hit the notification bell so that you'll be the first to get my notice of my videos that I'm sending out on a daily basis. And please, I want you to follow me on all of my social media platforms. And remember, you can connect with me on my website, henryfernandez.org or thefaithcenterint.org. My friends, faith in your God will always move mountains out of your life.